scientific notation. And why do you want to do it? Well, first of all, the reason why we use scientific notation is it's an abbreviated way of writing a really long number. Now, this number doesn't necessarily mean that it's a big number. It just means that it has a lot of digits in the number itself. For example, if we had a number, and I'm just going to use like a, not an actual number, just a kind of symbolized thing. Let's say we had point zero 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 and then some number we'll just call it B for now or we had a kind of the opposite of this Boo. <laughs> and instead of having to write out all these zeros every time we wanted to use this number we use scientific notation and scientific notation has the general form of this number B times 10 to the, and it's raised to, the, to an exponent. And the way that we figure out the exponent is by counting the number of decimal places that we need to move the decimal in order to get B to be between 1 and 10. So here on this very small number, we can see the decimal place here, and we're just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so this value right here is going to be, we'll just call him n. And in this case, n was 7. Now, if you move the decimal to the right, then that means it's going to be a negative n. So in this case, it would be a negative 7. Now, for this one, we don't have a decimal place that's shown, which means that we get to assume that it's down here at the very end. So we just count, going to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is also going to be n, but because we moved to the left, it's going to be a positive n. So in this case, it would be a positive 6. Now, I just want to do a couple of examples with you guys. Uh, I'm just going to write down a couple of numbers here and then we're going to convert them to scientific notation and then we'll do a couple of other numbers given in scientific notation converting back. So the first number that we're going to do is 4200000420000. So first of all, I forgot to write this down. B needs to be between, BTWN is shorthand for between, between 1 and 10. So it can't be less than 1 and it can't be greater than 10. So right here I see I have 420,000. Well there isn't a decimal so that means I get to assume that it's down here at the end and I'm going to count until the decimal reaches a place where this number is between 1 and 10. So 1, 2, 3, Four. And some of you might be tempted to stop here because this is our first non-zero number, but you'll see what we have left is 42. And 42 is greater than 10, so we can't have that. So I need to move the decimal one more place to the right, and at this point you see that I'm at 4.2, which is exactly where I need to be. So the number is going to be 4.2, and then we put the times 10, and we moved the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the left, so that means that it is going to be a positive 5. So 420,000 written in scientific notation is 4.2 times 10 to the 5. Well, let's do another example. Let's do point zero zero six four three and convert that to scientific notation. So I'm going to look at my number. And I'm going to move the decimal, which is right here, until I am between 1 and 10. So I'm going to move it 1, 2, and here's my first non-zero number, but if I were to stop right here, I would have 0.643, which is less than 1. So I need to go one more, and now I'm at 6.43, and then my times 10 to the 1 to 3rd power and because I moved to the right it's going to be negative. Now for my next set of examples I'm going to give you the scientific notation and you need to write the standard notation for the number. 
So let's say we have 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fourth. And we need to convert that into standard notation. Well, I'm going to write this number right here without the decimal. 1, 0, 1. And this 4, it's a positive 4. So that means that the number indicates that from the standard notation, it was moved to the left. Well, to get it back into standard notation, then I have to go to the right. And so in the decimal, my number, or in the number, my decimal was right here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and place my decimal. So that means that this number was 10,100. Now, if you get confused between the right and the left, which admittedly I do all the time, I always remember that if you have a positive exponent, then that is associated with a really big number, a large number, an amount of money that you would like to have. And so $10,100, that'd be pretty good. Up here, $3 million, that would be really good. And then a negative number on the exponent is associated with a value of money that uh, you just really wouldn't want to have. It really wouldn't make a difference. So it's associated with very small numbers. So that's just a way to check it when you're done. If you have a positive exponent, you should end with a big number. If you have a negative exponent, you should end with a small number. So the next example that I want us to do is 7.96 times 10 to the negative eight. So negative exponent means we're going to end up with a small number. So 796 and I'm going to move the decimal eight spots and in this case to the left because I want to make a small number. So I was here and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and place that decimal right there and then fill in all these little bumps with zeros. And that, ladies and gents, is how you do scientific notation.